Hey everyone, here with one more tutorial. So I know that some of my students are struggling in using the online database to find sources and I don't know what background you have in using the academic um, online database and so rather than um, not know, I thought I would just rather create you a tutorial. So here we go. To get to the library, I'm going to start at the very basics, so forgive me if you know this. You go up to resources, go down to library, and it's going to take you to the library web page. What you want to do is find journal articles. That's what we're looking for. So you click on that, and then this is where I wonder if students get a little bit confused. I strongly recommend using Academic Search Complete over here. What's cool about that is it's actually a very broad, very academic online database. At the high school where I teach, we only have Academic Search Elite which is not nearly as, as, as complete, well, there you go, as this one. So click on Academic Search Complete, and it's going to take you into this search box. And, and I, I realize that if you're not accustomed to this, um, oh, you will have to sign in at one point. I've already signed in. So you do have to sign in with your regular GCU login. Once you get to this page, um, this is where you're going to type in your keywords for what you want. You do want to make sure a couple of things are marked. First of all, you want to make sure full text is marked. That way, whatever comes up is actually a text you can access. If you don't check that, it might say, yeah, there's this article out there somewhere, but we don't have it, so you can't look at it. That's not very helpful. So you want full text checked, and you want scholarly peer-reviewed journals checked. This will make sure that the only results it shows you come from scholarly peer-reviewed journals. That means that, for example, if I write an article about teaching writing, um, it means that my colleagues, my peers, my, um, you know, my educated professionals that I work with are going to review my work and make sure I'm right and make sure that it is what my profession believes before it is published. Okay, so when you're using a scholarly journal, you know that 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 information is credible and reliable and it is is what the profession feels for that time. Okay, so that's why we want to use peer-reviewed journals. Now, the the hardest part is is isolating for keywords. So, for example, if I want to research organ trade or organ donations or the black market, I have to decide what I want because if I type in for example organ trade and um, America, and then I search, it's going to come up with no results because there is no legal organ trade in America. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of America and just see what happens when we go looking for organ trade. And you can see that I have 43 results right here. I have zero results when I searched for organ trade and America, but I have 43 results when I search for just organ trade, and those are right down here. And so I can see that it's an academic journal, it's an academic journal, it's an academic journal, in Spanish even, um, it's an academic journal. So I can click on the PDF to view the full text of this article and see what it has to say. And so this then I can decide if this is an appropriate source for what I'm, what I'm about to write. Now, regarding that, I strongly recommend you go find your sources before you begin to write. This way um, you know what to write. Many people seem to try to do it backwards. They try to write a paper and then they try to go find sources to kind of squish into it, to manipulate into their writing, and that just does not work well. That's really kind of backward. So what you want to do is find your source material first and then that will help you establish a viewpoint that you can then write about from your sources and it makes the whole process a lot more smooth okay so now I want to go back to my results list I can click right here too I suppose and let's say I want to search for organ let's go organ sales see what happens if we search for organ sales and again this is still all um, scholarly peer-reviewed journals see it's still limiting for that I now have 94 results when I look for organ and sales. So, hmm, I can look at these and you can see the, the variety of, of good sources I really seem to be pulling up. Um, 
you know, so I could look at any of these. I could focus on the kidneys. I see a couple on kidneys. Um, I could look at transplant tourism. You know, let's say I wanted to look for transplant tourism. So I want to go with more of that. Transplant tourism. Now I'm going to get rid of sales. I'm just going to search and see what that says. And it looks like I get 54 results. That's pretty good. So I can click on these. And see, now I've gone from, you know, organ donations or organ sales to, um, you know, something else. Now I've even limited it more. And now all of these results are about transplant tourism. So that's pretty cool stuff. Let's try one more. Let's go. Let's just see what it says about black market and organs. Maybe I should just put organ. Let's go or organ. That's simple enough. What do I get? I wow, ninety-seven thousand nine hundred and twenty-three. Maybe I don't like this or so much. Let's get rid of that. Go away, organ. Try that again. I really don't want to look through 97,000 sources. And it comes back with 26. Okay, 26 is doable. I can do that. Um, so black market and organs. And there we go. Okay. So a really, really interesting selection of sources. So hopefully this helped. Um, if you need more help, feel free to post in the QTI. You know, that's a forum where you can ask questions that other people may also benefit from. And I am happy to answer those there, especially because I know that many people are going to get that benefit. Um, you can also contact the librarians. Up here, there's a link for Ask a Librarian at GCU, and those librarians love the job security that it provides when the students get a hold of them and ask them for help. I know especially, I mean, at the school where I teach, the librarians just love helping the kids because, for one thing, again, that gives them job security, but another thing, they do that job for a reason. They like helping people find information. Kind of cool job. So I hope this helped. If you have ideas for how I can make it better, please post that in the QTI as well because obviously I'm posting all of these to you know try to help you. That's my goal. Um, so please let me know how I can best do that. That's what I'm here for. Thanks so much.